In this video, not only am I going to give you my two cents on proper paint prep, but I'm also going to tell you why my advice is worth listening to. My name is Michael, and this is Primal Edge Designs. Now, I've only been 3D printing for a few years now. It's a relatively new tool in my maker's toolbox, so it may not seem like I'm the first person you should go to for advice like this, but you'd be wrong. You see, I grew up in the automotive industry. My family's proudly been running the same mechanic and auto body repair shop for almost 80 years now. I played in that garage as a kid, and by the time I was 15, I was working there. I spent the first decade and a half of my career sanding, priming, prepping, painting, not only vehicles, but damn near anything you could think of. Believe me when I tell you, I know this process. Now, I may have moved on in my career, but that business is still there and is proudly run by my family still to this day. In fact, Pete, if you're watching this video, keep me honest in the comments down below. I'd appreciate it. My brother Pete also has a YouTube channel, Auto Repair Tips. I'll link it down in the description below. He gives all kinds of advice on repairing your vehicle, no matter what make or model you've got. So definitely go check him out. Okay, that's my resume. Here's my advice. I think we're all aware that the key to a perfect paint job is in the preparation. Having said that, trying to figure out a shortcut is not, in my humble opinion anyway, the best possible idea. Instead, follow the process, but improve the procedure. What do I mean by that? Well, all the advice I'm hearing is pretty much borrowed from the automotive industry, for the most part anyway. And I'm here to say, if a shortcut is to be had, they would have figured it out already. I mean, seriously, We've been fixing cars and painting on cars for over a hundred years now. Believe me, folks, they've got the process figured out. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel. I mean, the steps are pretty damn clear. Bondo if you need to, prime it to fill all your scratches in, sand it smooth, repeat steps two and three as needed, spot putty the stubborn areas, one last prime coat, high grit sanding, wipe it clean, and get it painted. Now, while that may be an oversimplification of the process, believe me when I say it is in fact accurate. Which begs the question, if the steps are the same, how do we make it more efficient for 3D printing? Now, remember when I said follow the process, but improve the procedure? The process is nothing more than a list of steps it takes to get something done. The procedure are the instructions within each step of the process. For example, putting the glass away, that would be the process. The procedure would be walk into the other room, pick the glass up off the table, carry it into the kitchen, open the cabinet, put the glass in the cabinet, close the cabinet, and you're done. That's the procedure. So we can, within this community, and pretty much do, follow that process pretty closely. But every so often I hear some tip or trick on the internet that promises to take hours of work off of your prep and turn it into just a few minutes. The most recent of which is where you take spot putty, reduce it in acetone, and use your airbrush to paint over the model, covering over the layer lines. Essentially all you're doing is making a very expensive primer that doesn't do as good a job as primer itself. I mean, yes, you can technically get a great end result, following that process, but it's going to cost you a few things in the end. You will, over time, ruin whatever airbrush that you're using, no matter how well you clean it. Walk into any body shop in the country or damn near the planet, go right up to the painter's toolbox and take a look inside. You're going to see at least two paint guns, one dedicated for primer and one for the painting and finishing. There's a reason for that. No matter how clean you think you get it the first couple of times, 10 or 15 times later, you're going to find the gun doesn't perform exactly the same. And believe me, the same guns that they use over here are not too dissimilar to what we use for airbrushing. You take them apart, you clean it, sand it, and do the whole nine yards. It becomes a pain to try to clean your gun perfectly for paint. And when you're done, you're going to spend way too much time cleaning that airbrush so that it still works effectively. Because it's going to be harder to clean, and that pretty much is going to eat up your time prepping the piece anyway. So you're giving up time here, but you're adding it back over here. I think it goes without saying that the fumes and particles you'll atomize with the acetone is not gonna be the safest stuff for you to breathe. And although we like to think that everybody's got the perfect space and ventilation to do all kinds of airbrush and painting, the fact is not everyone does. And not everyone's gonna have the safety gear that they need. So my advice would just be to stay away from the process, if nothing else, just for the fumes alone. Lastly, that mixture is so thick, it's not going to prep the piece properly. Again, you might get what appears to be a perfect finish by sanding it down and seeing all the layer lines gone, but because it gets laid on so much thicker than primer, you're gonna create voids down in the layer lines that will shrink over time. This product is not immune to shrinking. You don't wanna just hide the scratches, you wanna fill the scratches. Let me explain. Primer is meant to be applied wet, not running, but wet. And a not insignificant number of videos out there show people priming parts of every kind, not just relegated to 3D printing, and they're doing it too dry. They're dusting over the product because they want it, They think they're getting good coverage, and they're not. Primer needs to, for all practical purposes, be wet enough to seep into all the cracks and crevices that you're trying to cover up. Then you sand the product off, 
remove the high spots, leave the low spots, clean it again, and then add it again. So slight tangent here, we can improve the procedure and save time by learning how to prime properly. That alone will reduce your prep time quite a bit. Now Bondo, I don't think is the right product for a lot of the applications I see people using it for. Now to be sure, it definitely has its uses and it is something you should put in your toolkit. But more often than not, I'm seeing it being used in kind of an overkill fashion. Now Bondo is not the easiest stuff to work with, so I'd use it sparingly. Like if you've got um, a misshapen area that messed up during the print, you don't want to have to reprint the whole thing. Or the layer lines are really horrendous and you don't have much of an option. Now here's where you have an option that I haven't seen yet. I'm not saying it's out there and that I invented it, I just haven't seen it. Believe me, when I got into 3D printed, I did a lot of research about removing layer lines. But if it is out there, I don't believe that it's getting the attention it deserves. I see far too many videos suggesting options that may not be the best for you. And this, for me, has come across perfectly. I keep a small jar of putty mixed with acetone next to my paint. It's really, really thin, like I would say somewhere between ink and cream, maybe milk, something like that. It's very runny. I use... Uh, <laughs> I use one of these brushes, this one's wet, really soft bristle brushes, not the hard ones. Uh, th this kind of picks it up like a mop and it drags and it wicks into the product very well and seeps way down into the 3D print, filling those lines down where they belong. A lot of the applications I see people using Bondo for, this would be more than sufficient. What you'll end up doing is putting in an app, putting in one or two coats with this, sanding it down, maybe having to put another coat in, and then move on to priming and painting. Ugh. To me, this seems like the best possible process to follow. So let me recap the steps again. Do your initial sanding. Pull it right off the printer, take some rough sandpaper, scratch it out, knock over the fuzzies, make sure it's pretty stable. Now while PLA may not sand properly, it can help you get that first initial surface ready for the next phase. Use the spot putty and acetone mixture that I told you about and paint it all over the product. Let it seep into those cracks. Might take you a couple of coats and don't worry about whether it's perfectly smooth. We're gonna take care of that next. Light sandpaper, maybe 220, 180, something like that. Sand it up nice and smooth. Clean it off real well, then take a look. Are there any more big cracks? Repeat two and three if you need to. Once you're done, that brings you to step four, priming. Put a nice wet coat of primer on your product, let it sit, let it dry, let it cure, and then go back and check it out. Sand it down, get it nice and smooth. Don't be surprised if you're going to see a few scratches. Don't reach back in for the acetone. Let the primer do its job. You might have to repeat this step a few times. Don't worry about it. It's part of the process. Now, repeat the sanding and priming only if you need to and for as many times as you might need to. Take a look at your product and see if there's any areas that still need to be addressed. Really bad ones pinholes, scratches that are just too deep that you might have missed first round, then use the spot putty again. You might not have to use it with the acetone. You might be able to use it straight, just a little bit on your finger, wipe it on there and you're good to go. Sand it all one last time, prime it one last time, sand it, paint it, and move on. Now I am sure there will be no shortage of opinions out there saying that their process and their way works best. And my advice is not necessarily for those folks. I mean, to be honest with you, if you've got a process that works and you get great results and you're happy with it, no need to change. But if you are looking to maybe improve your process or maybe try something out that might help your current process, stick this idea on the shelf, circle back to it at a later time and see if it helps. If not, don't use it. If it does, good. My advice is simply, I guess, to help those people that are looking to figure out how to do this from the get-go or possibly for people that have heard the other advice about spraying the uh, acetone and spot putty mixture. And I really want to try to pull people away from that process. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's safe. And I don't think you're going to get the results that you want. We're looking for long-term lasting results. You don't want to paint a product, get it looking beautiful, and then four months later find out that cracks are starting to appear because the product is starting to shrink. What's worse is getting paid for doing it and having a customer call you back three months down the road saying, hey, why are there cracks all over my paint job? We can avoid this. Now, let me reiterate. I strongly disagree with spraying spot putty. It's not healthy. It's not right. It's not the right procedure. And you're not going to get the right results. I'm not just spitting this out after having tried it a few times. I went back over to my brother's shop, asked the experts, the people that have been doing this for 30, 40 years and more. They all agree. Again, if there was really a way to save time, they would have already done it. Now, I want folks to have as pleasant of an experience as possible while they're 3D printing. And hopefully a few more makers are born in the process. 
or as a procedure. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Do you think I'm wrong? Or do you think I'm right? Stir things up down in the comments below and let us know. If you like maker style content and 3D printing videos, consider subscribing if you're so inclined. And having said that, I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon.